And, and I just hope that God can meet you exactly where you're at because I know that's exactly the God that he is. So as we do that, let's sing out some praises and just honor and bless him with all that we are. Come on. Higher than the mountains. Higher than the mountains that I face And it's stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change This one thing remains This one thing remains Your love your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love never fails, and never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love. Come on, on and on and on it goes. And on and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains This one thing This one thing remains Your love Your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me oh your love in death and in life we're confident in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me oh your love and on and on it goes and on and on and on and on it goes and it overwhelms and satisfies my soul and i never ever have to be afraid this one thing remains this one thing remains your love your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me oh your love in death and in life in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart It never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out on me. Oh, your love.
want to sing out, Grace, what have you done? And Grace, what have you done? Murdered for me on that cross, accused and absence of wrong. My sin washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall The scandal of grace You died in my place So oh, my soul will live Oh, to be loved just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Yeah, yeah. You're forever the hope. You're forever the hope. On our King has overcome it all. So we sing out, Death, where's your sting? Death, where is your sting? Your power is as dead as my sin. The cross has taught me to live. And mercy, my heart now to say. The day in its trouble shall come. I know that your strength is enough. The scandal of grace, you died in my place, so oh, my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, give all I have just to know. There's no one beside you Forever the hope in my heart Oh, to be like you Oh, to be like you Give all I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one beside you Forever the hope Forever the hope in my heart, yeah, yeah, you're forever the hope, you're forever the hope, and it's all because of you, and it's all because of you, and it's all because of you, Jesus, it's all. Because of you, Jesus, it's all. Because of your love that my soul will live. And it's all. Because of you, Jesus, it's all. It's all because of your love that my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in my be like you, oh, to be like you, give all I have just to know you, Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope, forever the hope in my heart, and it's all. 
because of you, Jesus, it's all because of you, Jesus, it's all because of your love that my soul will live. And it's all because of you, Jesus. Because of your love, because of your grace that you displayed on that cross. The scars that you wear that were so rightfully ours. The death and the cross that we deserved. But God, out of your mercy, you bore the price for us. So we choose to look towards you to thank you with everything that we are. So let us become more like you, Jesus. Let us display to our communities the character of your love, of your perfect grace, so that they would come to know you. So Jesus, the best that we know how, we lay down our lives in praise and worship to you. We pray all these things in your powerful, mighty name, the only name that saves, the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. You guys, enjoy the rest of the service. Hello, Akuo. It's great to be back with you once again. And it's, it's fairly early in the year. I mean, we're still in the first, what is that, third, fourth quarter of the year. Uh, and if you haven't been able to spend some time with us, you know that each year we have a word that God gives us to lead us and to have us focus on. And this year it's community. Y'all, it's, it's community. It's in our mission statement to be in community with Jesus and one another. And what's different about community this year than in other years is we're doing our best to be incredibly intentional about community and how we build it, how we live it out, some of the practices that we need to include, and then how they all connect directly to the gospel. And what we have seen so far this year is that so much of being in community is about being generous, being generous with your time, with your grace, and with your resources. Really, it's about being hospitable in every situation that you find yourself in. And that's why we have one of our community members with great experiment, experience with hospitality coming to talk with us this week. This week, Grace Watson is going to bring us the message. Grace is one of the co-leaders of the Deco Love Your Neighbors community group here at Akuo. There, they regularly hold get-togethers where they invite their entire block. They also make it a point, uh, when the weather is good, to sit in, front, in their front yard with a handful of empty chairs and invite neighbors to come and hang out as they're walking by. I've also personally experienced the love and care of Grace's hospitality on a few occasions, and I know that she knows what she's talking about when it comes to hospitality. So without further ado, here is Grace Watson. Hello, as Humby said, I'm Grace Watson. My husband and I have been a part of Akuo from its earliest days. We moved to San Antonio four and a half years ago, having lived in other Texas cities and in the Midwest. By profession, I'm an early childhood educator so please forgive me in advance if I come across like a kindergarten teacher. It's an occupational hazard for me. John and I have three adult kids, two granddaughters, and we just celebrated our 40th anniversary. For most of those years, my husband's been in ministry, which has given us lots of opportunities to practice hospitality. Like every other action I can think of, practice is required and practice makes us better. It's been a lot of years, but honestly, I'm still practicing. It's important to practice, even when you don't feel like it. Practice needs to be done on a regular basis, and it has a purpose. That purpose is improvement. I'm not fond of the phrase, practice makes perfect, because I think perfect is something that needs to be tossed out the window. So we're going to focus on practice today, but practice making us more comfortable and better. Last week, Zach spoke on the Lord's Supper 
when believers in Jesus Christ came together to remember the suffering of Jesus Christ, his death, his forgiveness for our, of our sins. Today, I'll be emphasizing the rest of this sentence that is Acts 2, verse 46. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. This is how the very earliest Christians spent time together. It should be a lot like that today as well. Please join me as I ask God to teach us today. Father God, you are generous and kind. Thank you for your love and for your mercy. Thank you that you're always at work. God, I pray now that you would help us to open our ears and listen. Help us to set aside our distractions and focus on what you'd like to teach us today. Thank you for all you give us and for this little bit of time to focus on some of the things that please you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's begin by establishing what hospitality is and also what it isn't. I'd like you to walk away today with this idea. Hospitality is a reflection of the transformational work God has done in our lives to those around us. It's an offering, a willingness, and an attitude. It's not a performance. It's not about your domestic skills. It's simply loving people in practical ways. We can love others because God first loved us. Hospitality is also a mystery. Hospitality isn't convenient, comfortable, or painless. It's going to cost us something. It's gonna cost us some time, some effort, and a bit of money. It takes a hit at our privacy and can cause us to feel vulnerable. It also holds an element of mystery because we're not really sure how God's at work in the midst of it. If you've ever had mixed feelings about hospitality, I'm right there with you. I remember a time when I had to practice even though I really didn't want to. Back when our kids were little, my husband was in ministry to college students. We had them over a lot, which gave me lots of practice in hospitality. But they were an easy crowd with low expectations. College students didn't expect anything fancy. However, there was a student named Jacob. He came over way too often, and when he came, he stayed way too late. He joined us on short notice and no notice, and rarely said thank you. I noticed that he rarely spoke to me or to the kids and really just monopolized John's time and attention. I started to resent being the cook, dishwasher, and childminder while they just talked and talked. At the end of one such evening, I walked Jacob to the door. Suddenly he turned to me and said, Grace, thanks for having me over so often. Yours is the only happy marriage I've ever been around. Good night. Well, I just stood there, stunned and silent. I leaned on the back of the door and just thought about my heart. And I apologized to God for my rotten attitude. God was mysteriously at work, even though I had no idea what he was up to. Imagine what God might do when my attitude's better than that. Here's a passage from the Bible that I read frequently, Romans 12. I highly recommend the whole chapter because it has lots of wisdom about how to love people, even the ones who are hard to love. You know who I'm talking about. Here's Romans 12, verses 9 through 13. Don't just pretend to love others really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. 
Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Oh, there's that word, practice. How can we live this out? What does practice look like? These are actions and attitudes that aren't easy at all. We're going to need practice. This doesn't come naturally to most of us. But as we practice, we can start with our hearts, praying and asking God for a willingness to really love people. We can keep on praying for those who live, work, play, and worship around us. We can love people by inviting them to spend time with us. People are usually very happy to be invited, even when they aren't able to say yes. By inviting people, you're communicating that you thought of them. What a blessing. 1 John 4.19 says, We love each other because he first loved us. God has poured out his love on you and me so that we can pour it out on others. To practice hospitality, we can work on our heads, throwing out thoughts of perfectionism. It doesn't have to be complicated. Be genuine. Be yourself. Don't allow overthinking to talk you out of it. Just say no to thoughts of souffle when breakfast tacos will do. Everybody likes those. Things never go exactly as I envisioned, even after all these years of practice. But that's all right. I encourage you to just keep practicing. The scripture says, be eager, be ready. Well, in my case, I'm about half ready. At our house, we make a habit of staying about half ready for guests so that we can say yes when people want to come over so we can take some spontaneous opportunities. Half ready looks about like this. I have a bin that's always ready with paper plates or cups, plastic stuff, things that are ready to entertain people in the yard. So I can just carry it out on short notice. This is also a lifesaver if you host a community group. And if you've ever thought about uh, hosting a community group, I hope you'll consider staying about half ready so that every week it's a little less work. I also usually keep a bin with snacks and drinks and things that I hide away from my family and I say ready so I have something to offer when people come over. Some other ways to stay half ready are to have a few go-to ideas for cooking or for ordering. You don't have to be good at everything, but you could do a really good job with a few things. You could become really, really good at making spaghetti, keeping it simple. You can do this. If you like to play games, host a games night. Don't forget the yummy snacks. Look around. There are people all around you who need the warmth that God has given you to melt the isolation that they might be feeling. Loneliness is epidemic in the world today. We have no idea how alone some people may feel. Neighbors, coworkers, people who are new to Akuo, and families you meet through your kids' activities are all great places to start. For my husband and me, about three years ago, we decided to become intentional about loving our actual neighbors. Our newest adventure in hospitality is that four times a year, we're hosting a potluck and we're inviting the neighbors into our home. They don't all come, but many do. People feel honored when we reach out to them with an invitation, however simple that invitation might be. And when people offer to bring something, say yes. They want to participate in the gathering as well. Honestly, it's not about us anyway, so graciously accept their offers for help. We're embracing the opportunity to be involved in the mystery that God is doing. He uses our less than perfect efforts 
It's not about us anyway. It's about loving others because God first loved us. This is genuine affection. God is doing things that we've never imagined. Some of our neighbors had lived on our block for decades, but hadn't spoken to one another in lots of years, but they reconnected at one of our events. Other guests made a friend with the person sitting across from them at one of our potlucks. It's about creating opportunities and letting God do the rest. I hope you'll remember that hospitality is a reflection of God's transformational work in our lives to those around us. I look forward to hearing about your adventures in hospitality. Here at Akuo Church, our word this year is a community. Jesus did everything he could possibly do to be in community with us. He was vulnerable and honest. He loved people like family, and he shared the good news. To be fully in community with him, you have to believe in Jesus and what he did while he was on earth. For some listening right now, you might never have taken this step. If that's you, thank you for listening. If you've decided to say yes to Jesus, I'd like to lead you in a conversation with him now, which we call a prayer. In this prayer, you'll simply confirm your trust and faith in him, that Jesus is who he said he was, the Son of God, the perfect lamb sacrificed for you to make you right with God. I'll ask the rest of the Akuo community to pray along with you, because here at Akuo, no one ever has to pray alone. You always have a community praying with you. So if you want to confirm your faith in Jesus, I invite you to say this to him. Jesus, I believe you. I believe in who you are and what you've done for me. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you've never been baptized, we'd love for you to get baptized with us. Later this month, we're going to have an opportunity for people to be baptized. Think about if this might be the right step for you and talk to one of our pastors. The word akuo means listen. So let's take a couple of minutes to be quiet and to listen to God and what he wants to tell us. I'd like to ask to have you ask God this question and perhaps ask him again over the next few weeks. Here's the question. Let's pray now. Asking God, God, please show me who needs my hospitality.
Now let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for everything you did for us, for going to the cross, for suffering for sins that were ours, not yours. Jesus, will you help us to be eager to love others? Would you help us to radiate love to others because you first loved us? Will you help us share the good news about you with others? We need you so much. And we thank you for being with us at all times. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, will you all join me in thanking Grace for bringing such a great message to us here today. Grace, we, we thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now, before we go, there are a few things that I would like to share with you here. Uh, here at Akuo, we don't want to just talk about community. We want to be about community. So like we do, we want to keep you posted on everything that's happening here at Akuo to keep you connected to the community better than you ever have before. And one of the ways that you can do that is by going to our calendar, akuo.church slash calendar to see what we have planned. And we have a few things coming up. The first one is happening this Saturday. We're having our Sorrento Serve Day. It's going to be a time where we sit down, hang out, eat some food, hand out some food, and then spend some time with our friends from the Sorrento. This kicks off at 11 this Saturday next door at the Sorrento. Now, the other thing we need to talk about is Easter. Y'all, Easter is happening at the end of this month, March 31st. So that means we have a couple of big things planned that day. First is the Easter egg hunt. Y'all, we will have thousands of eggs filled with candy that kids will be able to grab that morning uh, after our Easter service. Now, with that being said, we're going to need some help filling those eggs. So two ways you can help. One, you can bring some candy in. We'll gladly accept that. Or on March the 24th, we'll be stuffing all those eggs on that day. So feel free to come and hang out and help us with that. The other thing happening that Sunday is baptisms. So if you're interested in getting baptized, scan the QR code on the screen or go to akuo.church slash sign up to get signed up. Y'all, uh, I, I just want to thank you so much for being a part of our community. And, and just want you to know that if you are generous here in our community, generous with your grace, with your time, with your resources, I just want to thank you. And if you are generous with your resources, uh, I just want you to know that when you're generous here to a cool, you're not really being generous to us and our organization, but really you're being generous to your community through Akuo. So I just want to thank you for being generous because we wouldn't be able to pay and, and help out the folks at the Sorrento next door without you. We wouldn't be able to help out uh, uh, different organizations around our city that need help resourcing people in their community without you. We wouldn't be able to help uh, folks in our community make sure that they have food or, or that bills are paid without you. So thank you for that. Now, I also know that you might be one of those people that needs that help. And if that's you, we want to be linked to you during this time. That's why the church community exists to help people like yourself in that situation. So if you need help, please reach out to us through email by sending us a message at help at akuo.church. You can also text or call the church at 210-901-8785. Now, if you are willing to be generous with your resources, here at Akuo Church, the way you can do that is by going to our website, akuo.church. You can also give through text. To do that, all you have to do is text akuo, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you want to give to the number 77977. Now, if you don't want to give electronically, we also have our P.O. Box available if you'd like to send your gift through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail it to Akuo at P.O. Box 100-125, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. All right, y'all, that's all that we have for you today. I just want you to know that I appreciate each and every one of you, and I love you all. So before we go, though, let me just pray over you one last time. Uh, Jesus, I, I pray that as these people leave here, that you would remind them of the hospitality, the grace, and the love that has been shown to them at every single step in their lives. I pray that they would be able to then remember that and show others that same love, that same grace, that same hospitality that they've been shown in their own lives, and maybe even exceeding what they've been shown in their own lives. Jesus, we thank you for how you are moving in these folks, and we thank you for how you're going to move out into this world through these folks. We love you, Jesus, and we pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right, that's all that I have for you. We'll be praying for you for the rest of the week.